don't you know better than to sneak up on a guy when he's listening to Zombie Takeout? Hello and welcome to episode 435 of Zombie, Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The B-Movie and Cult Movie Show. I'm John. And hello, I'm Scott. And before we get to this week's movie, we've got a voicemail from Bodo about this week's movie. House 3 has nothing to do with the house. Has nothing to do with the horror. Has a lot to do with boredom. First of all, no chest bursters. Nice to know the serial killer grows up to be the general in the future. Ten million jump scares with cats. It wasn't 3D, it was the third one. Fourth one better be in space. Oh, never mind. That was Xanthera, wasn't it? I hope the fourth one's better, guys. I would. One brain, maybe? Please watch the Japanese one. You guys. Watch the Japanese one. I beg everybody, watch the Japanese one. Cleanse your palates. Be free. Anyway, you guys are the best. Peace. Bye. You know, I wasn't in agreement with him on his first two calls, but mm. I think he fucking nails it to the head. I think we should just go home and uh, <laughs> drive <laughs> safely after that. I don't know. I, I honestly, and it's, I'll get to this, and actually, it's going to be my first this point once we get through the plot summary. Um, I think this was my favorite of the three. Um, not really? saying it was good, it's a low bar. <laughs> But the cast kind of, for me sets it apart. Anyway, on to this week's movie, which is from 1989, House Three, the ho- the horror show. Yes, we're still doing the house movies. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> and of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Home Movies. If you want to bore the audience of your next film, try editing in some home movies. Nothing puts them to sleep faster. And. Uh... Try watching them in ways that no one ever watches them either. Mm-hmm. Well, and also brought to you by Unironic Maniacal Laughter. You shouldn't sound like a little girl when you do it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I was not expecting that laugh from mm-hmm. that person. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that was supposed to be a joke or not, though. I think it was. You think so? I don't know. It didn't seem like there was much humor to this one. All right, so we have a new house and a new cast of characters. It seems like the house, the quality of the house, uh, goes down in scale Hmm. as the movies go on. Well, I mean, the Um, second one is a fucking mansion, so. The second one was weird. It was like some museum that they just kind of borrowed, and and I don't know. Hmm. But uh, let's see. So, um,. We have a uh, detective who's, uh, you know, he's chasing down this criminal. Well, not just a criminal. He is a serial killer. And um, he, he likes to cleaver people to death. And uh, there there's all of these uh, body parts that you just see lying around and stuff in a restaurant. And uh, they, they corner him. And uh, he somehow captures him despite killing pretty much everybody around um and and so we fast forward to him on you know about to get his death penalty Mm. and uh there's um no plexiglass in this execution which is odd (laughs) just the crowd there There, there's a lot of that in this movie where it's kind of like wait what (laughs) um and uh it takes a lot to kill this guy for some reason. Well, they, they reveal later that he, uh, he trained himself for it to accustom him, mm-hmm. acclimate himself to the electric to electricity. Chair. Um, all right, <laughs> we'll buy it. <laughs> we'll play along. Um, so, right. He gets executed, but he's not really dead. Or is he? Uh, his spirit is somehow, uh, freed from the body. Um, He's sort and... of become electricity himself, I think. Right. That's where right. it lost me. And uh, 
and what he haunts is this detective's house despite never having been there <laughs> in the physical world and uh for some reason he's focused on this furnace in the bottom of the house in the basement in the basement yeah um which i mean okay i i guess he the flames were really high and cool and nobody ever runs their furnace that high <laughs> at least not since the day of pot belly stoves mm-hmm. um they also leave and... the door open a lot which apparently is a thing i've never had a house with that kind of furnace but apparently you're supposed to leave the door open a lot mm-hmm. it seems odd to me yeah so he's in the house he's tormenting the detective that put him away and um rather than get his uh, family out of the house they stay, of course, because that's just what you do in a horror movie. Mm. It's kind of this well, is kind of there'd one be of those no Geico movie if you didn't. It's like one of those Geico commercials where it's what you do in a horror movie, mm. and everybody follows that to a T. Yeah. Um, uh, he spares the family, kind of. He the first, of course, the first killing is the uh, the horny teenager. Mm. Yeah, you have to you have to kill the horny teen. Everything is just so by numbers oh, yeah. here. Um, so you, he kills the horny teenager, and uh, then when uh, our detective confronts him in the basement, they think he's yelling at the teenager. Mm-hmm. Instead, he's yelling at the ghost. Oh, the, right. I, I was thinking of the diff- a different horny teenager. Yeah, the boyfriend, right? Yes, the boyfriend buys it, and then. Uh, that, well, they eventually discover the body of the boyfriend, and of course he is blamed for it because they heard him yelling at someone in the basement, mm-hmm. and he's sounding like a crazy person talking right. about the ghost. And uh, he'd ran into a scientist. Well, a scientist had been well, I at guess the I execution because he kind of suspected. <laughs> he's referred he's to as the professor, scientist, the professor, right? Who's trying to tell them what's going on, and of course he's just not listening, and then. Uh, well, since uh, the ghost can go wherever the fuck he wants, he finally goes back to his apartment and uh, <laughs> kills this guy, too. And, of course, that lands on the detective, too. <laughs> but the detective knows, our hero knows that he's he needs to get back to the house to protect his family. Because and the scientist, played by Tom Bray from Reptide, if anybody remembers that masterpiece from the 80s. <laughs> Did that last, like... Two a years, actually. Two? two seasons. Two seasons. Um, but the, he, the scientists had figured out that if you do um, juice him with enough electricity, you know, turn him corporeal somehow, and then nail him with enough electricity, it'll actually finally kill him. Or you'll be able to shoot him. Right. Head. It'll, he'll manifest himself back into physical plane. Right. Well, well, that's what, yeah, juice him enough, him. and then he becomes corporeal, and then you can kill him. I mean, I'm sure he experimented on this repeatedly and worked this out in his laboratory somehow that all this was how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, I honestly thought it was Justin Long's father, but I mean, I... Yeah, yeah they all do look a bit like. <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't get over that to th- remember him from Riptide. The name again, rang probably, the bell. I only probably saw an episode or two of Riptide. Yeah, watched it. And uh, nothing well, really sticks with you from that show. No, no. Yeah. Like, I, the name rang a bell. I, at first, I thought it was the guy who played Hawk from Buck Rogers. Oh, you said who, Hawk. I was like, oh, that guy looks a lot different. No, no, no. Not that every book. <laughs> the guy who, Hawk from Buck Rogers, if anyone remembers that character. Um, ah, but that was kinda. Tom Christopher. Hmm? Spencer. Anyway. Hmm. Um, we, uh, where was I? Oh, right. He uh, comes back to the house uh, when he's uh, tormenting the entire family. And, um, he, of course we think they're dead and, uh, they all, you know, hilarity ensues because uh, <laughs> they all, it just, uh. <laughs> the ending does get nicely weird though. Like the last half hour there is, it is truly bizarre. It kind of is. I mean, only because none of it made any sense leading up to that. Mm-hmm. But, um, it... but the ending ending it's well, just yeah, yeah. ugh. <laughs> the movie currently holds a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's being generous. I feel. 
Um, and writer Alan Warner decided not to have his name featured on the credits, so he opted for the universal pseudonym for people who wanted to associate themselves from a production, Alan Smithy. The name was misspelled. Alan, usually with two L's, he's usually spelled with two L's. Warner's credit only has one. You know, I did not notice that it was an Alan Smithy uh, mm-hmm. production or writing. Now, before I st- even started watching this movie, I'd seen the trailer. Yeah. Um, and... I thought, you know, regardless of what other issues it has, and there are a lot, it stars Lance Henriksen and Brian fucking James. I know. I That that I, alone is going to be worth the price of admission. I I was like sitting there going, "Oh, well, Bishop and and James, this this, you know, this mm-hmm. could, you know, actually be pretty decent." And the son is played by uh, Aaron Eisenberg, Nog from DS9. Nice well, to I see him in another. Got the idea of the laugh for Ferengi from from James yeah. actually. Uh-huh. It's a very Ferengi t- style yeah, yeah, yeah. laugh. And the mother that was a nice surprise. Um, Rita Taggart, best known particularly to us as Carla B from Night Court. <laughs> I, I did not recognize her. Um, but also, what first caught me when I first started watching the movie, the title screen, very shock treatment. Yeah. Um, if you've ever seen Shock Treatment. Um, also, the first shot of the bedroom looked like something from an 80s power ballad video. The camera the just kind of comes in from the street and you get this very power ballad shot. When when we start, uh, when the plot starts revealing itself, I'm like, this, this all seemed really familiar. And the weird thing is, there's a movie, a Wes Craven movie that came out just a few, like a <laughs> little after this, called uh, Shocker. Oh, okay. And it, it it is about someone who dies on the electric chair, you know, oh, right. and I vaguely his remember spirit. That. But I remember that movie and actually following a a, a you know a logic, you know, mm-hmm. he's yeah. in electronics. Right, right. He goes through the electricity. There's there's something. Whereas this, it was just kind of like a, the whole thing from beginning to end was just this whole Mm -hmm. random, like, whatever. (laughs) That was kind of the fun of it for me. Like, I didn't think, going in, I wasn't expecting this to be good, ever. (laughs) It's a house movie. (laughs) No, I don't think I was either. Um, And I thought the bar was so low from last week Uh that it would have to be better than that one. But... Everything about this was just this random cobbled together mm-hmm. thing. I mean, this could be one of the worst scripts we've ever seen, actually. That's entirely <laughs> it's, possible. It's really, I mean, so many details as we go along. Like, um, yeah, we'll start out with the beginning, the whole movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think what the director liked doing was just having the family improvise stuff, uh-huh. like act as a family together. Right. And it was awful. It was so <laughs> yeah. terrible. Like, none of the... Like, who watches home movies like that? I could yeah. go for one of those burgers now. I mean, just terrible lines during the credits. But mm. you're just like, wow. What, yeah. what is, why, when is this going to get interesting? <laughs> And not long into the, speaking of the director, a weird director choice or actor choice. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame the director for this one. Um, they hear a noise in the middle of the night, and um, Henriksen's character I can't think of the name offhand goes to get his gun because he's a cop. Yeah. And as he's pulling out his gun, he gives this incredibly fucking creepy look to, directly to the camera. Oh, um, Lucas McCarthy, mm-hmm. and I was hoping. That uh, his partner, after his arm was ripped, cut off, was going to reveal that he was his father. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, but when he takes out his gun, he looks straight into the camera for a good like two count. Creepy as fuck. Does not make any sense. <laughs> also, there was a weird. I'm, I'm not going to comment on the ads themselves, but one was placed oddly on Tubi. <laughs> So we go from that, you know, right after that scene where he gets the gun and he's trying to find the noise, turns out to be the cat. And then we go to a flashback. 
Because I guess he looks into the furnace or something. Yeah. And the commercial made it odd, made, made, made it look like that wasn't quite a flashback. I wasn't sure why we were suddenly at this crime scene. <laughs> it was, you know, when they took down uh, the killer. Yeah. Nice score factor in that scene, by the way, though. You know, when they go into the kitchen, finding all the body parts. Um, that is definitely the brightest part of the movie, you was gotta, the, the visual effects, yeah. the, the gore factor. You got to appreciate just, a killer with a sense of humor, too. Just second to none, I would say. And, and uh, you know, a lot of this were, was excuses to work in some of those effects. Yeah. Oh, right. I just remembered. I saw my notes because the most of the movie is pretty forgettable. The whole fucking thing was a dream. That whole beginning was a dream. Yeah. Because um, he woke up and we had Brian James as the wife. and yeah, yeah. Um, Also, he got executed with an earring in. <laughs> no shaved head. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, don't you, yeah, there, there's... They weren't going for... what? What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, realism. At all. No. <laughs> At all. Um, I mean... But that scene was fun. Movie. Yeah, watching this is a them... movie where uh, somebody makes a turkey dinner in the middle of the day for lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just so they can have the effect coming out of the whole roasted turkey. Mm-hmm. But you know, the execution scene itself was fun because you know they try to fry him like four times. He stands up. He's all burnt. I did enjoy that. Although his return from the dead was like something out of um, Ghostbusters. Yeah, that I, mean, I I fully expected. I believe it's magic, and that's where you get the first uh, unironic diabolical laughter yeah. <laughs> that we get to hear throughout. Uh, as I have in here, great cast, bad script, mediocre directing, and I don't think I don't know. Do you think that was um? An actual corporate sponsorship by Nestle Quick to get mentioned in here? That is a distinct possibility. I mean, I, I nobody big at the time was in the film. I don't think any even Hendrickson was really well known. Well, um, the person who funded a lot of movies, who we've overlooked, is Michelle Pfeiffer's kid sister. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was kind of big. She played the daughter. I mean, um, she wasn't really a kid sister. She was almost 30 at this point, actually. That she was, tw- I, I checked. Because I remembered that Aaron Eisenberg was like a couple of years older than me. He was 20 when this movie came yeah. out. The little brother was 20. Right. He looked way younger than he was. Um, He was like 25 when he played Nog. When he yeah. started playing Nog. Um. The sister was 25. Dee Dee Pfeiffer was 25 at the time. Oh, I thought she was 29. I think she was only like five years older than than Aaron. Okay. So, you know, she's not playing that much. She's playing believably younger than she is. But Um, she she really produced mm. a number of different movies, like Falling Down and stuff. She produced them? Yeah. Oh, shit. I did not know that. So she was probably, you know... A financial backer of this movie is my okay. guess. Hmm. Interesting. But we're, we're 34 minutes in, and I'm thinking, I hope the payoff is worth all this setup because it was a ridiculous amount of setup. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was 10 minutes in, I realized this isn't going to go anywhere, is it? <laughs> 40 minutes in, and we get the first kill that wasn't a dream. Yeah. And, you know, after the boyfriend is killed, um, the sister goes looking for him, you know, because she she doesn't know he's dead yet. And she and she brings her little brother with him. If he was at, if her boyfriend was actually hiding to surprise her, I don't think he'd want his girlfriend's little brother there. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of things that just were like, why? Why is this happening? I mean, they really didn't know what to do. With uh, with Aaron in this, you know, mm. I mean, that whole side plot of him scamming, yeah, he loses for free food. I mean, none of that made any sense whatsoever. Why that was even included? It was just a to little, give him something. It was a nice little unintentional nog foreshadowing, though. I couldn't think of help thinking of self-stealing oh. stem bolts, <laughs> making deals to to 
you know, shipment of this and that. Mm. Also, this this movie raises an important question: How did Bobby Collins ever have a career? <laughs> I totally don't remember that guy, and I watched you know enough stand up back in the eighties. I do not remember that guy. I remember the name. I know I've seen his act before, but I don't remember it outside of what I just saw in the movie. And wow, that was bad. And also in that scene, okay, their family is just sitting around watching TV. It's a stand-up comedy act. Laughing way too hard at these really bad jokes. Yeah, yeah. And he starts hallucinating that it's, well, not hallucinating really, because it's this demonic, you know, possessed, you know, non-corporeal killer but he starts seeing the killer on tv instead of bobby, bobby collins probably one of my favorite parts of uh james just doing bad stunts oh, yeah, yeah. a killer <laughs> um but then lucas pulls his gun out of the back of his pants and shoots the tv he's just sitting there watching tv with his family and he's carrying his gun yeah but who could blame him for shooting that TV if it was just hearing the Bobby Collins well, yeah, uh, yeah, routine? Yeah. I think I might have done that too. And then we get, at least my next note, is the interrogation scene. Because, you know, <laughs> shortly after that, they find the body. And I know they were trying to do this intense De Niro thing, but it just did not work. And I think it leads to another problem of the film. The whole... I mean, the whole thing is about, you know, that playing on that fear of criminals just overrunning the decent people and that, you know, maybe even capital punishment's too good for them kind of thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, at first you might think, oh, maybe they're saying that capital punishment won't solve anything, but that's not really what they're going for here. It's about blowing the motherfucker away yeah. without the trial and all that and, and letting him prepare for it. And here in this scene, they kind of lay it out because you've got the internal affairs guy all, hmm. I didn't want this job, you know, we we just got to, you know, got to do it, you know, because they're going to have my ass downtown yeah. and, you know, all that stuff. Hmm. Although I will say Brian James' English accent was pretty impressive. <laughs> I was not expecting him to be able to do a decent British accent. He um, did. <laughs> I, 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 it was better than I ever would have thought he could do. Like at first, I didn't like recognize him coming in. I was like, "Wow, why? Where did they get this guy in that bad accent?" But I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> to recognize him, I said, "Oh no, Brian, why did you do this?" <laughs> Again, I went in expecting an intentional comedy. Um, my next note is, "You killed Nog, you bastard." <laughs> And Scott, the, the son, and the professor both killed off camera. Which I'm surprised you're not complaining about, because you're, you're the one who tends to get more annoyed by that. Well, they, they didn't really kill him, though. Yeah, they did. They found Scott's body shortly after. Nice, nice score there, by the way, with his ear. Yeah, but it was all... They were all back in the end. There's no explanation for that. Scott was dead. And, we, and the professor's really dead, because we never see the professor again after he's killed. Well, yeah, but, the professor's really dead because the cops found the body. But in the end, everyone's alive in the family. Yeah, it's it's just, it was some kind of all a dream thing, or... Right. Which, I mean, that alone, that's <laughs> even worse than killing someone off camera. Yeah. I, they kind of killed the professor on camera. Like, he lured him in, and like, you know, he shows they up. They cut and... it right before the, the blade came down. Which, why, I, I don't know. Isn't that yeah. what we're here for? <laughs> right. <laughs> what? But then we see Scott, his ear is, you know, he, basically his ear is cut off. Brain is leaking out. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, they, show, they, they have the images of the carnage there. Though it's not really carnage, which I'm not sure why. Hmm. I mean, he, he didn't cut off, you know, arms and cut off his head. We don't... It, this, this, this Scott's killing was not as intense as the others. Um, uh, extra. I mean, they, they do the whole thing with uh, the the wife of, you know, oh, Lord, don't go down in the basement right. when she's following the girl down into the basement. Mm -hmm. um, and then they... It's, it's never flat out said, but it's, it's strongly suggested... 
by the pregnancy scene <laughs> that, oh, that this, he rapes the daughter. That this non corporeal being somehow raped the daughter. Um which would be all the more reason to send the father over the edge, although he's already over the edge at that point, I guess I guess. I mean he was over the edge in the beginning. Yeah, true. He didn't really have a decline, it was just kind of a sudden drop. Um I just like I said, the last half hour makes up for a bad script because it just got hilariously weird. Um Loved the fire. Right, they're somehow in like a power station of some yeah. sort. <laughs> I, I gave up trying to just follow kind of like, anything. Right. He's like, let's lead him to the power station. I'm like, wait a minute. You were just in your own fucking basement, man. <laughs> yeah. And you know, they they fry him in the power station some amazing fireworks. And then they're yeah. suddenly back at the house. Oh, we got a kick out of that. Um, by the way, the reason this is House 3 is that, uh, according to the producer, Scott S. Cunningham, it was going to be named House 3. But, but or, the reason it's re- it's released as either House 3 or just the horror show, it, the original plan was House 3, but the new distributor, MGM, wanted a fresh start and a potential new series with an iconic new villain. So the script was modified to reflect that approach, and it was retitled The Horror Show for the U.S. release, but for the non-U.S. market, it was House 3, The Horror Show. Now, why was it called The Horror Show? Because it was intended to be a proper horror movie? As okay. opposed to, and not, not a horror comedy hold on, hold on. like the last two. I get that it was intended to be a real horror movie. I walked in expecting a real horror movie. That was your mistake. But... Why? Well, no, no. I mean, that's what they were going for here. Hmm. But why is it called the horror show? I mean, do you, can you name like, unless it was to do with some sort of presentation? Hmm. <laughs> why? Why is it called the horror show? Well, lack of I mean, aside from the stand-up comedy thing, yeah, exa- that, that is exactly what it is. It's a lack of imagination. Also. Brian James has said in several interviews that of all the roles he's played, this is his favorite. This is probably his largest role. Yeah, prob- probably, yeah. And he was doubled for the stunt scenes by Kane Hodder, a little tie into last week. Oh, wow. And just going through my trivia real rapid fire, um, a number of scenes were cut to get an R rating. Um, in in the in Europe, there's, there's an uncut version. Um, some sh- uh, some scenes uh, that were deleted um, include Bonnie's birthday scene where blood spills out of her cake, a scene showing Bonnie's dead boyfriend being torn in half, and a scene <laughs> where Lucas pulls his chest open and his heart is shown. Those wow. would have improved the movie. It would have. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, pretty bad that they got cut. Yeah. I mean, the, the 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 body double scene with. Dee Pfeiffer is fucking hilarious. Apparently, um, that I did some checking. Um, apparently, not a double. It's at least not listed as a double. And she did that a couple has, of other top. She's done a couple of other topless scenes. So that it, had to have been a double. Because it seems like an egregious double, but according to Mister Skin, it's not a double. Be, but think about how that scene was, where she like rinses off the hair, mm-hmm. and then when she's in the shower. Right. Like when it's back in oh, uh, yeah. on the body, it, it, she's then shampooing the hair again. It, it and then looks they cut like away, she's... it looks like they're badly cutting around a double. I agree. At first, I thought it they was. That's why I checked Mister Skin, and and apparently it's not a double. Um, and I checked other stills that from her for other films she did. It doesn't look like a double. Um, anyway, That's sequels and remakes. Funny that the... <laughs> they wouldn't do double then hmm. the way they did it it sounds like they did a double maybe i mean maybe they were playing with that yeah maybe, uh, I don't know. even the cat survives though jesus yeah, christ yeah. and scott uh, is brought back from the dead um mysteriously yeah. um yeah so sequels and remakes there's just one more sequel sequels. that we got to do next week um <laughs> has for the re- repossession and it is the only direct sequel to the original so william cat will be back um, I've read the plot summary because I don't care about spoilers. <laughs> it could be the worst of all. Really? Just judging from the plot summary. Um, I don't know. After last week and then this week, whew, I don't know. 
Underbrains. Underbrains. I think the cast elevates it, and that last half hour just gets beautifully weird. So it just pushed it high enough for me to recommend I'm going for. Wow. Uh, no, no one should see this movie. <laughs> Ever. Um, uh, I, I, I was so bored even, like, just into it. I mean, there just wasn't a whole lot going on. I mean, aside from some good effects... Hmm. Uh, I can't really see much positive to give. Even the cast just seemed kind of wasted in this. So, yeah, I'm going one. All right, and what have you learned? Sometimes the shemps should need to stay the shemp. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that we're all guilty, and the only thing that counts is whether or not you get caught. All right, that's it for House 3. Until next time, when we'll be reviewing... House for the repossession, finally finishing these fucking things. Thank you, sir. May I have another notoriously bad movie? Until then, of course, always remember never forget wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. Mm